If you ever wanted to play on a Minecraft server with your friends, well, there are some free solutions out there like Aternos and some other sketchy ones. Probably notice the performance isn't great and the moment you add like one mod, it kinda goes to the bottom or you start flying from Elytra, then it's pretty shit. Then you have the paid uh, stuff, which are actually pretty good and well performant. And they are pretty easy to set up, but they're expensive as shit. For a 32 gigabyte RAM server, you could pay upwards to 30 bucks a month, which is just way too much. So today I'm going to introduce you to the actual real solution, and that is making your own server. For this, you obviously need another PC. You can do it on your main PC, but it needs to run 24 seven. Otherwise it's kind of shit when your friend wants to play and you are at school and the PC is turned off. Instead of that, we're gonna be doing this, a PC that is 24 seven turned on in your house. Let's keep the talk away, let's get started. First of all, it's a PC. This one I got for 20 bucks is a Fujitsu with Ento i5. I think it has a hard drive. We won't be keeping that, you can. You need a PC with storage and RAM and obviously a functioning PC that can get into Windows or you can buy one without a hard drive and I will show you how to install one in the future because I'll be changing that out. You will be needing a screwdriver, a regular Phillips screwdriver. You will require network obviously since this is connected to the internet and it's going to run somewhere to the internet. I recommend using an ethernet cable. This is quite a short one because my network switch is literally on my desk and I don't need a long one. Or you can use one of these. It's not recommended. The latency will be a lot higher and you can encounter lag. Wi-Fi Bluetooth adapter. They're pretty cheap. So some kind of networking you will require obviously a power cable it needs to be plugged in and you do not really require this permanently it can be a temporary solution but you need a monitor output for installing the operating system and setting stuff up afterwards you can just ssh into the pc using your local network you will only require a different pc so you can use your main pc to operate on this pc you will not require this anymore and you will require a second computer with a usb flash drive it needs to be at least 8 gig i think if you want to run windows i think 16 gig don't quarter and that just get a bigger one like 16 gig should be fine also during the setup afterwards it's not that important you do require a mouse and keyboard to set it up obviously now to the optional stuff i will be adding an ssd into this this is a regular sata ssd it's pretty basic it's also very cheap this one is 240 gig i don't know if you can tell it's 240 gig just trust me man i will be upgrading the ram since this only has 8 gigs if i'm not mistaken i will be putting in this 32 kit that i bought off of ebay it's used i paid 20 euros for this it's also ddr4 2600 megahertz yes if you're gonna put a hard drive or any storage in this put an ssd please it's way faster if you don't want to spend that much and want to keep the internal whatever is in there do it that's fine if you are going to go out and spend buy an ssd please it's not expensive buy an ssd man opening the pc up usually it has a thumb drive like right here mine didn't so i'm just gonna pull this off each pc is kind of different maybe some have a latch here in the middle hp ones i know do have that this will be kind of what you will be seeing so in this case we have cpu cooler with a grill on top for whatever reasons i think so bigger objects don't fall in there because that's not a dust filter we have a ddr oh this is ddr3 right so we have this ddr3 4 gig stick of ram and i do not have any spare ddr3 memory right now so that means i did buy the wrong ones i why did i think this had ddr4 wait is this ddr it is i'm pretty sure it is ddr3 you can tell what ddr it is by these notches here if they match up they don't all right so we are making a three gigabyte minecraft server i'm gonna just keep this <laughs> if you have the right memory just put it in here next up we're gonna put in our gpu this is a gt7 10 yes a gt710 a one gigabyte gpu why do i need this it's because this pc has no hdmi and i need an hdmi out this pc right here has only dva and vga which you could just buy an adapter for you don't need a whole ass gpu i had this lying around it would be cheaper than an adapter you need some kind of display output so i'm gonna do that i'm gonna take off this bracket on the left side here right so i took out two screws this bracket and i'm gonna take out this so that my gpu can slot in here Right uh, now using a magnetic screwdriver LTT please send me one this one sucks there we go GPU secured I probably didn't even need that this GPU is so light this one does not require PCIe power so I do not need to worry about the power supply not being able to power it yeah I paid for the PC 20 bucks I bought us off a company that were changing out their customer service PCs this SSD was brand new on Amazon for 18 euros uh, it's all euros I'm saying bucks because 
I'm dumb, 20 euro plus 18 euro. And the GPU, I'm pretty sure you can get this for under 30. You do not require a GPU. You can just use VGA. This is just me not having a VGA cable or a VGA monitor. <laughs> we do have a hard drive in here. Take this thing out. We do not need another HDD. It's the last thing we want, honestly. That is it. This is a Seagate Barracuda 500 gig, November 2013. So this is a 12 year old hard drive. Probably doesn't even work or not much longer. Now we're going to put in our SSD. Now these things are actually so light you could just get away with putting in one screw. And I'm going to use the old SATA cable. That should actually be it. This PC has not a lot of ventilation. It only has a fan in the back and the front it has nothing. Uh, let's see if this thing powers on. Let me close the back panel for some bad luck. And let me set up a capture card. I bought like some really cheap ass capture card. Uh, hopefully it works and I won't have to record this with my monitor. So to get the ISO for the Ubuntu server, you're gonna go to ubuntu.com slash download slash server. And it should be the first one. It might be a newer version by the time you are watching this. It doesn't really matter. It should all work the same. We're gonna go and click on download right here and an ISO file should start downloading. And after that, you will also want to download Rufus. To, to do that, you go here on the first link again it might be a newer version by the time you're watching this you just click on this it's gonna install when you have the two files here you double click on rufus an admin prompt will come up you click on yes when that comes up and this is rufus right here when you got that you want to plug in your usb right now into your pc my usb drive is but it found it okay it will format it anyway but remember everything that you have on this usb stick will be deleted uh, you're gonna want to go here and choose disk or iso image and you're gonna go to select and then you're gonna select the iso image Image you just downloaded once that is done you leave pretty much everything the same i have right here and you click on start here you can see it has multiple partitions and whatever it doesn't really matter please insert a usb disk right you build into server and it's doing its stuff as you can see here all right when that's done you can just close it as you can see here this is what it looks like you have the whole boot everything here that is pretty much it go ahead and do the next step when you finish installing Ubuntu server onto your boot device, you can eject your USB stick, plug your PC into power, insert the USB stick and then fire it right up. Once you boot up off of your USB drive, this is what you'll be seeing. Just select the first thing and then you're going to have to wait for a while. Something like this will probably prompt up or your screen may flicker a bit because it's installing graphics drivers. After a while, you'll be seeing this. I'm going to just go ahead and choose English here. You can choose any other language you prefer. And then also your keyboard variant. I'm gonna just gonna go with the English you US layout and then here just choose the regular Ubuntu server we don't care about anything else here now you will be prompted to set up your network configuration now I didn't have an Ethernet cable plugged in just yet so I plugged it in and then went to edit IPv4 and then set my IPv4 method to automatic DHCP and as you can see here we very quickly found a new IP address for me on my home network and there we go now we can continue if you have a proxy address you can enter its details there I don't and then this part I'm also going to skip because I don't care about a mirror check. Once that is done, you'll be asked what disk you want to format and use as your boot device. I'm gonna choose the only one that's here and then here you can choose how much you want to partition it, how you want to partition it. I want the whole SSD to be this and that is already the automatic configuration which is just fine. I'm gonna go ahead and click next and then confirm the destructive action. In case you didn't notice, completely wipes everything on your SSD. Here, uh, as you can see, I wrote in my name Minecraft server which is not quite true. My name is actually Sebastian believe it or not my name is not Minecraft server I didn't read the second line um, so my name is Sebastian actually and then your server's name will be just Minecraft server here's a username for the home folder and then a password I was very creative and just chose admin as a password here you're gonna want to tick that install open SSH server if you didn't install it or missed it by accident you can always install it later it's not a big deal here I'm not gonna choose anything I'm gonna go over with done now this will be taking a while here once this will be done your pc will restart and you will be prompted to remove your usb drive from the pc and then click enter it should look something like this once that's done you need to click on reboot now and if in case you didn't remove your usb drive remove it now and then press enter i forgot to remove the usb drive and i got this error not a big deal after another reboot we are now into linux as you can see here i again messed it up a bit i wrote as my name admin which believe it or not my name is still 
still not admin. Uh, the name of this PC is server or of this user is server and the password is admin. And now we are in Linux. Before we install a graphical user interface, because this looks absolutely horrible, we're going to do a few commands to make sure everything is up to date. The first one, well, I actually check if I have sudo privileges, which I did have. You should also have sudo privileges. In case you don't, you need to add the user to the sudo group. To do that, you need to log in with sudo and add your user to the sudo group. If you have sudo privileges like I do, I'm just going to do sudo apt update. And I chose the latest version of this and it was pretty much done instantly. After that is done, I also wrote sudo apt upgrade, which updates every app here. And when that's done, then that is basically it. Now you are in Linux. Now I'm going to install our graphical user interface. So that is sudo apt install Ubuntu GNOME desktop, Ubuntu GNOME default settings. The way I wrote it here, in case you cannot read it because the resolution is so low, I have the command again in the description. Over here, you're going to have to wait quite a bit, actually. It's gonna take a while. All right, that is done now. Well, we still don't have a user interface. We need to reboot, so just type out reboot and press enter. Now, here I was encountering an issue with my network ID, as you can see. This went on for like 11 minutes. I did actually unplug my Ethernet cable to fix it because, as you can see here, I was waiting a hundred something seconds with no limit so I would have waited here for infinite amount of time. Here I was at around 12 minutes when I just unplugged my ethernet cable and then it booted straight up into Ubuntu. Then I just plugged in my ethernet cable right back in and everything was fine. There we go. We are now in Ubuntu. We are only a quarter of the way there. You still have not set up a micro server. So here I was searching for what JDK version I want with just sudo apt search JDK. I found the one that I used. It's the open JDK-21 JDK and also the open JDK-21 JRE, which stands for Java Runtime Environment, and the JDK stands for Java Development Kit. Here I accidentally typed search instead of install. You obviously want to install it now. I also typed SDK instead of JDK at the end, which is obviously not what I wanted. That would be the software development kit, which doesn't exist in Java. It's called JDK. You'll be prompted to agree the decision to install it. You just agree that and then you wait a few seconds. It's like 80 megabytes, which is fine. This should also install the Java runtime environment with it. If it didn't, you can also just go ahead and type sudo apt install open JDK 21 GRE. As I did here, it was already installed and I didn't need to do it. Now, in case you haven't already, you can also install open SSH. I installed it during the Linux installations. If you haven't, then type out this command right here just sudo apt install open SSH dash server. Then I'm gonna check for my IP address on the network which is ip-a or no just ipa my bad and then here is our ip address the 192 168 178 88 at this point you can check on a different pc if you can ssh into this pc with just ssh and then the ip address of this server right here this would work on another linux pc or a windows pc even your phone if you have a terminal application after that we're gonna want to install the minecraft server here i just wrote like minecraft server download in Google, click on the first link and it should be fine. For you though, check if it's the minecraft.net website. It should look something like this. Mine is in German because I live in Germany. I'm going to copy paste this command right here. I'm going to need it later and I'm going to go ahead and install the .jar file. Once that is downloaded, I'm going to change directory into my downloads folder and check if it is there. And it is. You can check and list your directory with ls. And then I'm going to move my server.jar file into my home folder with mv server.jar and then my home dash done it now i'm quite a dummy here i changed directory two times and i was a bit confused why i didn't see my stuff when i ls everything um, that is because i was not in my personal folder i was further down into the parent folder and i checked via the graphical user interface if my files are there so as you can see here in home my files are still here and here is the server that char file i also listed everything here to be extra sure i'm going to make a directory called minecraft server and i'm going to move server.jar into that folder. After that, I'm going to change directory into Minecraft server. Once you've done that, you can go ahead and type 
about this command to make sure the name is the exact same as your .jar file. You can give it more RAM or not, but I didn't care about that much. <laughs> this will fail. You will be prompted to accept the EULA. As you can see here, you need to agree to EULA in order to run the server. Go to EULA.txt for more info. So I checked where the EULA file is. It is in the exact folder that I am in. I'm going to vim into that EULA file. If you don't know how to use vim, I recommend you use the notepad via the user interface because vim is a whole learning curve of itself. Just set the false to true, save it, exit it, and then type out that exact same command. Mine didn't save. I don't know why. I had to paste it again and make sure the name is correct again. And as you can see here, it is working. It is taking quite a bit because this is a slower PC. And here it is. It's done it in 11 seconds, which is quite good for the first ever start. Now we are here on a different PC, actually. Uh, we are on my main PC. It's a Windows machine. And here I'm just going to enter the IP address of that PC that is on my same network. And as you can see here, I am connected. Now it lagged here a bit because I'm rendering all the uh, spawn chunks and it's only a one gig server, so it's not very great. After that, everything was perfect. It didn't lag a single other time. Now, a one gig server is very, very, like, almost at the edge of what's acceptable, even for a single player server. So you're gonna want to turn that up a bit. I'm gonna show you how to do that later. For now, we want to make the server available to everybody, not only for people on the same network. <clears throat> to do that, you can port forward your IP address to the 25565 port on TCP and UDP and here Theoretically, if you give anybody your public IP address, they should be able to connect to your Minecraft server. But that is very risky. Unless you really, really trust your friends, I don't really recommend it. We're going to install PlayIt. PlayIt is a proxy tunnel service that does this basically for you. Your IP address is never seen. And I'm just going to copy paste this command from this website that will be down below in my terminal. And it's going to do it in a few seconds. And as you can see here, it is almost done. Now it is. Now, me dummy, I couldn't find where the file downloaded so i switched to the root directory here and searched for play it and then i finally found it i waited for everything to load and then i double clicked the play it file which is the wrong thing to do you need to run it as a program if you just double click it you see what the source code is you'll be prompted with a link you just hold control on your keyboard and click on the link a new page will open up and this will prompt you to make an account or log in with an existing one we don't have one so we're gonna create a new one once that is done you will see this page now this checked for me a few times I don't know why it did that, why it took so long. Uh, so I was opening my terminal here to see what was going on. But then as I did that, it worked. You click here on create tunnel. The region, you keep it on free unless you want to pay for a closer region to you. And then choose Minecraft Java. You click on add tunnel and then your tunnel will be pending. It's going to do itself in a few seconds. You're going to have to be patient. Once that is done here, you click on next to verify your play it account. You'll be prompted to enter your password again. Um, after that, you'll be sent very verification code to your email enter that in here once that is done you can go back to where you were in tunnels and you'll be seeing your tunnel right here as you can see here you can enter custom ip there and create one but that will cost one dollar a month now uh, with the tunnel still running in the background in a terminal i'm going to start my minecraft server i'm also going to copy my start i'm going to start my minecraft server just the way you normally would while that is still running in the background i'm also going to give my server here a bit more ram as you you can see you can just change this number over to like 10 g so that that will be 10 gigs you don't have to keep count what a multiple of two is to we'll do this you can just type and then capital case g or eight capital case g and then run that as a program right click on it run that as a program and it should do itself very quickly once that server has finally started you can go into minecraft as you can see here a local host doesn't work it doesn't find the server this ip address works and then this local ip address also works now the local IP address will have lower ping but if you aren't on the same network it probably won't work so this will be the IP address you will want to give all your other friends it's still quite slow because I this time I only had four gigs in my PC uh, I'm also playing vanilla there's not fabric on my server there's also not fabric on my client so nothing was optimized vanilla just purely sucks and requires more than four gigs but it works as you can see here it's not really laggy it's fine you can play with your friends and it's much cheaper than any other alternative if you've enjoyed this video don't don't forget to leave a like, subscribe to see more like this into the future. And I want to thank all my channel members for supporting me and allowing me to do this kind of stuff. All of their names are on screen. If you want your name on screen at the end of each video, you can subscribe for only 99 cents a month. You get extra videos and your name at the end of the screen, right? Like you see here. I'm Wise and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.